Greetings everybody from the front seats of Boris. Today is a good day because we're heading to some fresh new trails and I can't wait. We're heading over the bridge into Wales to a place called Tepernis. I've never been there before and I apologise if that's not how you pronounce it, but the trails there built by the local diggers are supposed to be absolutely primo. So on we go over. Now, I'm in a bit of an ulterior motive because I also want to see how hard it is to rock up somewhere and get a comp. Locals are fast these days. I want to see what the trails are like. So we're going to go smash some laps and have a good time along the way. So to Wales. There we go then. Ooh, that's hot. Athlete mode has been engaged. We got breakfast. We're nearly there. Here we go, look. Need a free, free range egg. No, thank you. No? Breakfast right there. Today's weapon of choice Crocs and Canyon Strive. Set the trails. We're at the top of Tepentwish Trails then, and we've got Bob Gnarly, more Bob Gnarly, and the aptly named Granny's Fanny Trail behind us. So it'd be rude not to start with it, so let's drop in to Granny's Fanny. Let's go. wild through the end there. Okay, I feel suitably warmed up. These trails are so sick. But I think it's time now that we go and find a trail for the KOM, a little fun challenge. Let's go. Here it is then. We've got to the top. I've found my KOM segment. I'm gonna have a little bit of a cracker. It is wet, so I don't wanna get the excuses in already, but it's called Mick Kajiva, and then it joins into another segment at the bottom called Winterfell. Times are a bit sketchy because there's a few anomalies on there, but we're gonna hammer it, so let's go. See ya! Oh, God. That's quite oh, holy moly, that tree on the outside, which you get pushed to, is well slippy. Gonna have to watch out for that one come race runs. Yikes. Ooh. Man, this trail's right up my alley, but it's pretty flipping tight, and there are sniper routes which are just looking to take you out left, right, and center. Have a look at these. Holy moly, that's pretty tight. Might cut that one a little bit fine. I come round this right under here, compress, and the fork's compress, and that's where my bars dug in there, and you can see literally skimmed my hand and my bars. And I've just noticed this, look, down there is what must have happened to the last person who thought, oh, it's a good idea to try and get the comm in the wet, slippery conditions. I think there's even a moped buried in there. Hey, who knows? I'm not sure this is optimal comm conditions. Should we say, oh my god, front end nearly completely went. Come to one of the most technical bits that I found on this trail, and it's like a drop, little drop, drop, and there's this 
big, big pointy rock right in the middle, which you can either go off the right or on the left on. Either way, that's got rear mechs and discs written all over it, so we're definitely going to want to avoid that. I'm kind of eyeing up the right-hand line to begin with, but it's straight to flat. That ain't very pretty either. Do you know what? I brought 170 mil travel with me today and I thought, hey, be rude not to use it all. So I did. <laughs> Way too soft. Way like, that's the line I wanted to take. But I think we're gonna have to put some air in the old forks there because, uh, well, I basically just went straight to flat and bottomed out, didn't it? Right, that sketchy drop was the end of Mick Kajiva. We crossed the road and this is where the track continues into Winterfell, all the way down there. Look, it's made my voice go very high pitch. Look at that polished thing. I'm going to need to watch out for that come race run because that is actually lethal. Right, so as I stop for my little bit of lunch, let me tell you a really interesting story about how Tepentas Trails did come about. So it all kicked off about 10 years or so ago with a guy called Ryan Bullimore, who was the original sort of founder and trail builder of this place, if you like. Sadly, unfortunately, Ryan passed away a few years ago now in a tragic accident. But it, what it's done is his legacy has carried on, which is amazing to see because it's brought the, the local community and trails, trail riders and builders, if you like, even close together to bring even more unbelievable riding around this area. And I just want to say a massive thank you to, to him and everyone involved. But it's time to go do a race run, I think. So with that, it's to the top of the hill. Okay. Here we go, we're going to drop in for one more run and see if we can set the fast times. Get, see if we can get in that top 10 in the wet. Let's do it! Holy smokes! Steady there. Okay, the runs are done, the times are in. I had an absolute blast, blasting down that trail. It was really fun, and actually the more runs I did, as you'd expect, kind of got used to it. But the question is, did I set the KOM? Did I get anywhere near it, or were these conditions just too much to handle? Well, drum roll please. So the fastest time down that full track was a one minute 49 seconds. I did a time of one minute 53 on the dot. So, joint fifth place on the leaderboard, but only four seconds off of that fastest time, which was set back in April in those, I'm sure, very dry conditions. So, 
people, let me know in the comments down below. Should I come back and do a bit of a redemption video, try to go for that time? Or would you like us to go anywhere else and try and set some fast times? Well, as always, let me know in the comments down below. This has been really, really fun. I've enjoyed blasting it around on my bike, having some good times. My oh, buddy cameraman behind the lens there. But for me, for now, I'm out of here. Thanks for watching, everyone. I'll see you later.